everyone how are you all i hope you all are doing very well you all are very good and i hope you are asking that thing also that how are you ma'am so in reply to that i am also good if you are not asking then also i'm telling from my side that i am good and so before starting today's session student i would like to introduce myself so my name is arushi sharma and i'll what i can say that we are going to do this chapter together that means i am going to teach you the chapter that is the fiber to fabric and this is your first chapter in your chemistry syllabus of your class 7th that is called as the fiber to fabric but students if i am not wrong that you have studied this chapter that something about this chapter like the natural fibers or fibers and the synthetic fiber if you remember in your class 6th as well in that maybe you have learned about the natural fibers so natural fibers and in the natural fibers what you have seen about the plant fibers now in this session we are going to study more about the animal fiber it's just that i'm giving you i'm giving you the overview of this session that what we are going to start today but yes it's not like that that we are not going to discuss about what is fiber and what is fabric we'll go like we'll discuss each and everything but the more focus in this chapter is over the animal fibers okay so now let's start with this chapter and it is a very interesting chapter students so just listen to this video with the very carefully and with a great attention and now these are the topics which we are going to cover today you say mom so many topics are there that this much we have to study in today's class but you don't have to be worried they are very easy very simple it just that you have to be very focus about them so it just that the introduction oh i'm so sorry actually i haven't selected the now it's fine so we are going to find out the introduction history of clothing material then fiber and what are the type of the fibers and their definition and the examples we are going to see then it's the animal fiber we are going to see wool animals that yield wool from fibers to wool that how we convert the fibers to the wool and then rearing and breeding of the sheep so that's how student we are going to start this chapter today and that's how these are the topics which we are going to cover in today's class so don't worry it will not take more time it's just that it's very simple you will be very happy after listening this chapter that it's a very easy one so now starting with the topics so now in the introduction student what i would like to tell you is that in a, like uh, if i start from the fibers that what are the fibers okay so if you remember that the fibers are the thin thread like structure that the structure of the fibers are the thin thin thread like structure and if i draw the structure so they just are like these thin threads okay don't don't get confused between the but like we are having some kind of uh, what i can say like earthworm is also that kind of, i'm not talking about that i'm talking about fibers so fibers are also a thin thread structure which we get from the plants or the animals or from many other source also depending upon that from where we are getting it so fibers are the thin thread structure so when we convert the thin thread to the that first of all we convert this into the yarn that means fiber to yarn and then that five yarn is convert into the fabric that means student then yarn and then the fabric it's a kind of the sheet you can say and that's how students we like this process goes on fibers to yarn then yarn to fabric and then fabric is used to prepare the different different type of clothes okay so that's the whole process so like i was telling you in your class 6 have you studied so students like maybe you have learned about some of the fibers which we obtain from the plants okay so that if i talk about from the plants so generally we talk about cotton plants okay so because it is very common to use because from that cotton plants what we get we get cotton and by using that cotton we used to make cotton clothes cotton bed sheets and many things we prepared from it so that's how we have studied about the fibers which we obtain from the plants 
and even the student you have also learned about this thing that the wool and the silk uh, these two are the fibers which we are getting from the animals that the wool we obtain from the hair part of the sheep or yak or the silk fiber from the cocoons of the silk moon i think in your class 6 you have studied all of these things exactly so the main point which we are going to study in this chapter is that we are going to study about the animal fibers okay it is that to make you remember all of these things that you have forgot maybe till now because you have read all of these things in your class 6 and now you are in your class 7 such a long gap exactly it's not like that it's a very like you 6 and 7 there is not such a long gap like fibers are thin thread structure then we convert them into yarn and then yarn to fabric and that fabric is used and that's why i've written here that you have read about the plants and the animal fibers and uh, different type of fibers so that's uh, that's our student we are going to see about the animal fibers more in this chapter because what happened na, like our syllabus has been maintained like that like in your class 6 you have studied about plant fibers now in your class 7 you study like you will study about animal fiber then in your class Eight, you are going to study about the synthetic fiber, so that your whole chapter is going to be covered. Okay, so that's how we are proceeding in our uh, syllabus. So it's time of the animal wool and wo well, animal wool, not animal fibers. So in that particularly, we are going to study about the wool and the silk, which we get from different animals. Wool we obtain from the fleece or hair. That the another word for the hair is the fleece of the sheep. sheep sorry students if by chance it comes out as sheep so don't get confused it's sheep okay like from sheep we got it and then silk we silk fiber we get from the cocoons of the silk moth that is the silk worm we can say fine so that's how we are uh, studying all of these animal fiber in this chapter but don't worry the topics which we have seen for today we'll just cover all these topic Okay, so now it's the history of clothing material, students. Now, why we are studying the clothing material history? So, have you heard the story that uh, uh, I I don't know that how many years ago uh, that our ancestors that the human beings like if we talk about the ancestor of human beings, so they were the monkeys. We can like the, <laughs> this kind of thing is there. So, after the development or the evolution, what we have find out that animals, but initially that animals are not knowing about that how to cover their body. So that how student that first of all they start covering their cell like with the help of the leaves, like from the Plant leaves, no, or the tree leaves, which are of the big size, like banana leaves or something like that. So they start covering their body. But after some time, they realize they need to form the fabric. So from that student, they start making the fibers and then fabrics, and that's how the clothes development has been uh, started. And nowadays, you are looking that we are having the variety of clothes. It's like variety of clothes are there. So many brands are there. So I'm not talking about any particular brand. It's like so many brands. Brands are there. So many varieties, so many colors, so many designs. Even the texture. If I talk about, so we are having different different type of things right now. So have you seen like the first of all that people like at that time people doesn't know about this thing that how to cover their bodies. After some time they start wearing the plant leaves. Or the tree leaves, and even those students, I, I like this point comes to my mind right now that the people used to wear the animal skin, like they just kill the animals and they start wearing their skin so that because what happened is to read like when they. That point also there is a winter season. So in winter season, by covering their cell with the plant leaves, so they can't protect themselves in the winter, na. So what they do that the animal skin is very warm, na, in, in warm in nature. So they just kill the animal and they wear that uh skin so that they keep them themselves as warm. So that's how student after that they come to know that we need to find out something else, and that's how the cloth like the textile or the fabric has been developed. And nowadays you know. that for the summer for winter i am not talking about only summer and winter even though for night for day for party for wedding for a, everything it's like we have varieties we know what we have to wear on a particular occasion so that's how student clothes has been developed till now so you can see as time passed the clothing changed 
exactly like <laughs> have you seen any of the person right now wearing animal skin or covering their body with the plant or leaf, tree leaves exactly no but in movies and cartoons we have seen but they also have shown that these are the things of uh, the past of the history but if we talk about nowadays it's like the clothing has been developed so much so it's like according to history clothes change along with the culture fashion and wealth obviously students obviously that's the thing if you see the clothing style of people of 80s and 90s and the clothing style of nowadays so you will find out the difference okay so that's how the it developed like with the time so the expression of the fabric where so it has been started in the middle east during the last stone stage sorry late stone stage and wearing fabric clothes begin from this year to like this much years has been taken to start wearing the fabric clothes before that people just believing over the animal animal skin and the plant leaves so that's how that clothing has been started now knitting was first introduced knitting is a process student if you know that it's like a, that when we weave the, uh, that when we use these sticks to um, weave the thread and we get uh, uh, some kind of clothes so that the knitting was the first introduced as a fabric creation technique it's a kind of the technique like knitting and weaving are the two techniques so it's dating 6500 bc which is even popular in today's fabric even the students nowadays also like my grandmother has knitted one sweater from the wool for me so it's uh, you know like it is also going on right now also it is also popular in nowadays so that's how the knitting i have hope like you have also seen you know in your houses like your mother or grandmother used to knit out sweaters but what happened like these children uh, want something the from shops only so generally we don't we used to wear that but it's like that i like to wear those clothes which has been knitted with, uh, from the hands of my grandmother so but yes i am also cool so i go to the stores and buy clothes for me for <laughs> winter season i'm talking about so that's the history of clothing material students okay now moving ahead now it's the time of the fiber that what's the fiber is so as i show you that the fibers are the thread like structures that are long thin and flexible then they turn into the yarns and then yarns may then made into the fabrics and we are having different different type of fibers on the basis of the origin student we have identified two types of the fibers one is the natural fiber and one is the synthetic fiber so we'll discuss about them but it just that student fiber first of all for the fiber we need some source that from where we are getting that a fiber so that source has been divided that means from that what's the origin of that fiber so that origin of fiber has been divided into two parts one is the natural fiber and another is the synthetic fibers okay students so now i think we don't have to uh, discuss more about what is a fiber as you know this thing like we have already talked about that also that fibers are thread like structure then they convert into the yarns and then into the fabric and then we start using that particular fabric to uh, prepare different different type of cloth and like from where we are getting that fiber it's a very important thing so there are the two condition one is the natural fiber and another is the synthetic fiber so now we are going to discuss about them so first of all it's the natural fibers and the synthetic fibers so only by the name students that the natural fibers that the fibers which we are getting from the nature only whether it is a plant one or the animal one that means the fibers which we get from plant or the fibers which we get from animals that type of fibers are called as the natural fibers that the natural fibers are the fibers that are obtained from plants animals or the mineral sources we call them as the natural fib fibers such as cotton silk wool and for the student natural fibers has been divided into two parts that is the plant fibers and the animal fiber because students from both we are getting the fiber and plants are also the nature thing and animals are also the natural thing exactly so that's how student from plants if i say that we got cotton cotton fiber is there jute fiber is there and if we talk about animals so from the animals what usually we get we get silk or the wool is the example of that so you can see that we are getting these fibers from the different plants and animals and that's how student natural fibers has been divided into two 
categories that is the plant fibers and the animal fibers so if you remember in your class 6 you maybe you have learned about the cotton cotton production and the jute production that the plant fibers only okay so the natural fibers are those fibers which we are getting from the nature resources like plants animals mineral sources so that we call as the natural fibers now coming to the second type of fibers that is the synthetic fiber so synthetic fibers are the man made polymers now you will say ma'am what is the polymer is so we'll explain about you what is the polymer not we it's a uh, me don't worry so it's like synthetic fibers are the man made fibers first of all try to understand it that the synthetic fibers can also be called as the man made fibers so you can give two names to it man made fibers or the artificial fiber so these two are the names of the synthetic fiber that means these are the type of the fibers that we human beings prepare them and we use the polymers for that students like what are the polymers now that the polymers are the uh, you can say it's a fabric or a kind of thing that which is made up of the monomers that the polymers are made up by combining the monomer units monomer units now you will say ma'am what's the monomer is for example student like if i talk about any building okay if there is any building and we start constructing that building so in that building student what we require we require bricks so bricks you can consider it as the monomer and when you when you start combining those bricks and when you start putting all of the bricks together you will find out the whole structure of the building so that's how bricks can be considered as the monomers and that building is considered as the polymer that means monomer combined together to form the large unit that we called as the polymer so students even though natural fibers are also the polymer everything in the like everything in our surrounding is the polymer only because the Uh, because the compounds combine themselves and that's how we get the long chain of that and that's how we get the complete structure okay so uh, it's like polymers are obtained when small units join together chemically so that's how you see student that when the monomer units combine themselves then there is the formation of the polymer and that polymer is used as the fabric which is made up by the human beings that is why we call them as the synthetic fibers and if someone ask you that what are the other names of the synthetic fibers you can say man made fibers and the artificial fibers okay and you can see that these two are here rayon and nylon now you will say ma'am why we need the synthetic fibers if we are getting natural fibers so why we need synthetic fibers because students that natural fibers sometimes are very costly in nature and even though their availability is very less like for the cotton what we have to use plants for the silk and wool what we use, what we have to use animals so that's how we like we can see that the availability and even the cost are very different but for the synthetic we require the chemical compounds and from the other source not from the plants and animals and even though we can prepare them by own our hand and it depends on us that whether we want to keep if their cost high or the low so that's how student we prepare them and the cost is lesser than the natural fibers so that's why we start now a taste generally what we are using that's the main of the synthetic fibers natural fibers also we are using it's not like that but more is in the use like if we talk about that what is more in the use so it's the synthetic fiber so i hope now you got the point about natural synthetic and the polymers so this is the natural fibers and the synthetic fibers now we are going to study about the animal fiber that what's the animal fiber is students because this whole chapter is about <laughs> animal fibers okay so first of all it's like student we are having natural fiber okay now this natural fiber has been classified into two parts that is the plant fiber and then it is the animal fiber so the fibers which we are getting from plant we call them as the plant fiber so you can write down the fibers obtaining from plant we call them as plant fiber okay and the same thing with the animal that the animal fibers that the fibers obtaining from animals 
we call them as the animal fiber so it's like these two are the type plant fibers and the animal fibers the we are getting from natural nature only and we are calling them as the natural fiber it's just that plant is different animal is different so the fibers which we are getting from plant they are plant fiber and the fibers which we are getting from animal that are the animal fibers now if we talk about the plant fiber so as i have given you the example cotton and jute we get uh, the cotton from the cotton plant and the jute from the jute plant and now if we talk about animal so it's the wool which we are going to study in this chapter and the silk so the wool we get from sheep and any other animals also and silk we get from the silk worm so these are the animals that's why we are calling them as the animal fiber so these two we are going to see and these two you have already seen in your sixth class okay so that is the animal fiber student so i hope you got this point animal plant natural synthetic so everything is there now it's just that we have to start uh, we have to start discussing more about the animal fiber so first of all we are going to discuss about the wool so now what's the wool student so you can see here that that's the picture of the wool and i hope you all have seen the these rolls of the wool in different different colors and these wools are used in our houses to knit the sweaters or jackets or different kind of things so i have wear the knitted sweaters and they are very good like i just love them so the wool is the most commonly used animal fiber that the wool if someone start like ask you know that what is the animal fiber or give any example so wool is the very first thing which comes to your mind that okay animal fiber okay wool because wool is very commonly used and it's like we get these wool from the way, like hair part of the animal that is from the hair part of the sheep we get the wool so it is a modified form of hair that grows with the way weaviness yes they are weaviness kind of thing but it just that we uh, like we just produce them we do some processes and we produce a roll kind of thing okay and because of that weaviness of the student student you have obviously observed that thing that the woolen fabric is of the greater bulk like than the cotton fabric if we see the cotton cloth is very lighter in nature the woolen cloth is heavy in nature because the because of the weaviness of that wool and that is why student we used to wear cotton cloth in summer and woolen cloth in winter exactly and hence trap more air like a, uh, it will not allow what happened and like the wool will act as a insulator so it will just trap the air into the cloth and that air will not uh, hit your body and even though what will happen na that wool will keep you the warm because what happened that the heat which we are having inside our body it will not go out and when it will not go out so we feel warm and that's why we use these woolen uh, woolen clothes in the case of the winter season because of their greater bulk and that bulk we are getting from the waviness of that so that's how student you can see that to because of that heaviness we used to wear the wool woolen clothes in the winter season more because student what happened that these wools will act as a insulator of heat insulator of heat like why we are calling them as insulator of heat that they will not allow the heat which is present inside our body to come out so when we start wearing it when the heat is not coming out of our body so what will happen that heat will remain there and that's how we start feeling warm when we wear the woolen clothes exactly like if you have seen that when in winter season when we go for bath so what happen after bathing it's like we feel very cool like very cold and uh, and when we wear some woolen clothes we start feeling warm after some time why because the woolen is acting as an insulator of the heat it will not allow the heat of your body to come out and if if it will remain there so that's how you will feel warm and that's why we generally wear the woolen clothes in the winter season because they are having the more bulk as compared to the cotton fiber if you wear the cotton clothes like if i tell you uh, in my brother's wedding what happened that i wear some like it's in the winter season but i was not wearing woolen clothes i have weared one dress and it's not it's of the another material not of the wool so i was feeling cold because woolen is not there so how at uh, the warm like how i can keep myself warm so it's just that we are having the another option to use that is the electrical heaters but if it is also not there now 
you just have to stay in cold weather only so that's how student woolen clothes we generally obviously not generally obviously we use, we use in winter season so because they act as a insulator of heat so that's the main thing like the most common fiber animal fiber we generally use in our life like in our daily life example if we see so that's the wool student and from where we are getting these wool we are getting these wool from the sheep and um, from what part of the sheep if someone ask you that from the fleece fleece or the hair of the sheep we use to prepare the wool and fabric okay now these are the animal students that yield wool so sheep is one of them but we are having different different type of woolen fiber as well so the that different type of woolen students we get from the different animals because they are uh, if you see that in this picture all of the animals are different okay and when they are different so obviously they are uh, hair texture is also different if their hair texture is different so obviously we we'll get the different type of wool so it's just that it is obtained from the sheep and some other animals including kashmira and uh, kashmir and mohar these are the type of wool student okay so don't get confused about it it's the type of the wool which we get from the goats kewit from musk oxen that it is also again a type of wool which we get from this another animal angora from rabbits can you see that it is also a type of wool student that we are getting the different different type of wools from different different animals other types of wools from camlet so that's a student we are having different animals and from that different animals they are having different hair texture and from that different hair texture student we obtain different type of wool so that's how these are the animals which is used for the yielding of wool okay now from fibers to wool that how we convert the fibers to wool now these are the some steps involved there student so we'll see that part and then we'll discuss about this thing because student what happened that yes we are getting the wool from the animal that is the from sheep okay just take about the sheep only so that it will be easy for you but it's uh, just that when we are that there is the sheep so we have to see some like we have to do some processes so you can see that shearing and scoring are the two type of the so these are the two type of the processes which we use but now we'll see that how we use these processes and then we'll discuss about it so i'll just show you some video okay are you ready to see that video good let us study the process by which wool is obtained from sheep one step at a time first the fleece is removed from the body of the sheep the machine is used for the purpose the process so exactly student first of all what we have to do is that we have to remove the hair of the fleece from the body of the sheep okay so removing the fleece of the sheep from its body with the help of a machine is called shearing shearing does not hurt the sheep this is because the uppermost layer of the sheep's skin is dead usually hair is removed during the hot weather this enables sheep to survive without their protective coat of hair then the sheared skin with hair is washed thoroughly in tanks this exercise is undertaken to remove grease dust and dirt this process is called scoring the washed hairy skin is sent to a factory where hair of different textures are separated or sorted the small fluffy fibers called burrs are picked out from the hair fibers are dyed in various colors as the natural fleece of sheep and goats is black brown or white the fibers are straightened and rolled into yarn and finally the wool is ready to use
so now student have you seen that first of all what we are doing that the first thing is we have to collect the wool that's the hair part that wool from where we are getting that there are the sheaves that okay and from the sheep student what we'll do that we get the hair that we remove the hair or the fleece part from their body by using the machine and that process is called as the shearing process so you can say that the removal the removal of that uh, hair and the fleece from the body of the sheep we call them as the shearing process okay now the sheep fleece is separated from its body along with a thin layer of skin and see student you'll say ma'am it will hurt the uh, sheep so now why we are doing that no because the upper layer of the skin of the sheep is dead in nature so if we remove that thing so student you you will see that the sheep is not getting hurt because of that because it is dead in nature so that's the first thing which we do now second thing what we do student that is the scurrying now scurrying is what student that the hair which we are getting from the body of the sheep so you will see student that it is getting some dirt is there some soil oil maybe some kind of thing will be there exactly so then we clean it cleaning process will goes on and that cleaning process is called as the scurrying process okay in that the hair sheared skin is washed uh, in the tanks so that the removal of the dirt oil soil will get removed and after that we get the get the fiber and now that fiber is having the different different type of stick texture of thread then we separate them and we separate them so what we'll do we curve we straighten them and then we convert them into the yarn then we combat them and roll and that's how we get the fabric from there that is the woolen fabric and now that fabric is used for the cloth production okay then we start production from that fabric so that's the whole process that we convert the fibers into the wool okay now students like if i ask you that the removal of the hair of the sheep has been done in what type of season whether it will take in the winter season or in the uh, summer season so students it's like that obviously that the removal of hair or the fleece from the body of the sheep it take place in the summer season because student the hair and the fleece of the sheep is used to like they use their hair so that they can protect themselves from the winter season so that those uh, those hair will keep them warm that is why student we also use that that hair so that we can keep ourselves warm so that is why we generally remove those those hair and fleece from the body of the sheep in the case of the summer season only we never do this thing in the winter season so So that's how student we do this thing in the summer season, and then we first of all we remove that layer, and we call that as the shearing process. After the shearing process, we use to clean it, and when we wash that hair, so that process is called as the scurrying. So that there will be the removal of every type of dirt particles and wanted particles. Then we straighten them because we are having the different different texture of fiber, and then we straighten them. Then we convert them into the yarn. We roll them and we start using them as the fabric, and that's how we get the production of wool. Okay, so that's the whole process that we are getting the wool from the fibers. Okay, fine. So that's the whole thing, and then we like in the summer. In the summer, we'll do this thing. And yes, I've already told you that we remove the thin layer of the skin because it is the dead part, so it will not affect the sheep. Okay, so that's the whole process we do, so that we get the woolen fiber, woolen fabric from the body of the sheep. Okay. now there is the rearing and breeding of sheep student that how we rear and breed them so these two are the different processes student and for that also i would like to show you some video so just let me show you that video okay so here is the video so just listen this video carefully because it is also interesting one rearing and breeding of sheep raising of sheep for obtaining wool meat milk skins and manure is called sheep farming or sheep rearing people who rear sheep are called shepherds 
should have cover of hairs on it. So students, like someone can ask you that the people who rear sheep, so what we call them is, we call them as shepherds. Because now students, what we are seeing, we are going to see two things, rearing and breeding. So rearing student is just that uh, the products which we are getting from sheep and then we used to uh, maintain uh, those sheep that is called as the rearing process and the rearing process is done by some people and those people are called as the shepherds. Okay? It's body. It is called fleece or fur. Exactly. We obtain wool from fleece of the sheep. Sheep are herbivorous. They feed on grass. Shepherds take their sheep for grazing. They also feed mixtures of pulses, jawar, oil cakes and minerals to sheep. When winter starts, sheep are kept inside the shelter. Here, shepherds give them leaves grain and dry fodder to eat. The advantages of sheep rearing are Sheep are strong animal and can live in much more severe environment. Therefore, they need little care and management. In addition, they need little space for living. So, many sheep can be kept in small area. They provide various products which provide very good income within short time. They help farmers by eating unwanted plants in the farm. Here are some of the breeds in India along with their quality and states where they are found. Moreover, if you select parent having special characteristics, then it is possible to produce a sheep having those characteristics. This is called selective breeding. With the help of selective breeding, it is possible to produce sheep which provide good quality wool. Sheep rearing requires the provision of facilities such as plenty of clean and fresh water, availability of green foods such as grass, provision of medication facility as well as transportation and marketing facilities. So, sheep rearing is done in the areas where these facilities are available. In India, Sheep rearing is done mainly in the hilly areas of Jammu and Kashmir, Himachal Pradesh, Uttaranchal, Sikkim and Arunachal Pradesh. Sheep rearing is also done in plains of Haryana, Punjab, Rajasthan and Gujarat. I hope you have understood this topic very well. Thanks for watching. So students, now you have watched that video and from that video what you have seen that the rearing, that means the keeping of the animal, the keeping of the sheep, we have to take care of them, like we have to provide them medical uh, facilities, we have to provide them food so that they can eat them because students, what happened with the sheep because of that covering of that hair, they are heavy in nature so they can bear any kind of environment whether the uh, whether we can say the winter season or the summer not in the summer season because they start feeling hot that's why we remove that hair part and even though in the rainy season also so that student the rearing is a process of breeding feeding and providing medical care to the sheep so that we can get the good type of wool from that exactly student so it's like these animals are kept since they produce one or more useful products for the human being because you can see that only not the wool we are getting different different type of products from them and by selling those products that particular person that shepherds can earn more more money because student you can see that sheep are providing so many advantage as they are herbivorous in nature so they usually do what they do like they usually eat the grasses so like the unwanted part unwanted plants which are present in the fields which we have to remove so we can use the sheep so that they can uh, roam in the fields and they start the eating the that plant part so that's how student this is the rearing process that we in that process what we do that we breed feed and provide medical care to the sheep and you can see that they are very like very easy to handle them as they require very less area to live exactly and we get so many things and we can earn so much of money from them so that's how this is the rearing process now what's the breeding process 
And so what happens student that what we want, we want good quality wool. So for the good quality wool students, what we do, we use to see the breeding process that we take some plant sheep. Oh, sorry, not plant. You will say ma'am, plant sheep. What is the plant sheep? Plant sheep is nothing. <laughs> sorry, sorry. It's like I'm talking about parent sheep. Sheep, sorry. So parent sheep is there. So we take the parent sheep in such a case that they are having the soft hair okay and when they breed with together so they pass on their characteristic to their offspring offspring student means their children you can say their children so what happens student that when they pass on their characteristic to those offspring so that offspring sheep will also having the soft hair and again what you can do that these children will also can breed when they will grow and that's how the process can goes on and this type of breeding is called as the selective breeding because student from the uh, you can say from the group of the sheep we are finding out that which of the sheep are having the good quality wool and that sheep are undergoing the breeding process and from them we are getting the another offspring which are also having the same characteristics you know na, like if you uh, like uh, the, we are having the characteristics of our parents only exactly like if my, my father is tall so you can say the, my height is also tall my mother is fair so my color uh, will also be fair my mother is dark so my color will also be dark so we get some characteristics from our parents so the same thing will happen in the case of the animals also like when the parents breed with each other so what will happen that their characteristic will pass on to their children so that's how students when we are having a large group of sheep so we can select some of the sheep which are having the soft hair and then those parent sheep will breed and then we get their offspring that means you can say their children because the, we can say that their special characters will also pass from the parents to that sheep that the, you can say they, their offspring offspring means that the children the, the, okay so that the, and then again they are having the soft hair and this process is called as the select breeding okay some special breeds of sheep are specially chosen to give birth to sheep which you have only soft under hair okay and this process of selecting parents for obtaining special characters in their offspring we call them as the selective breeding so if someone asks you what is selective breeding so you can say that when we choose the special parents from the sheep so that we have the correct same characteristics into the offspring as well in the case of getting the soft hair so that's how we call it as the selective breeding so rearing is the keeping and the maintaining of the sheep and the breeding is to get the a good quality of the wool and when we are having the soft hair so definitely we get the good quality of wool and that's how student then the breeding and rearing is done and student what happened that the that the um the layer which is present just near to the skin of the sheep that is the somewhat very soft and the above layer are not that much soft so that's how student we generally find out the sheep which are having the all over the soft hair so that we can get the good quality wool do so that uh, their uh, uh, their children will also having the same characteristics okay so that's how they that is the selective breeding and now if you have seen in the video that how much part of the india is producing the wool generally it is the cold places because student in the cold places what happened na, that the uh, the sheep are having the uh, wool kind of like they are having the hair so that they can keep themselves like they can protect themselves from the winter season that is why we generally get the wool from wool and from the colder places of the india so that is the rearing and breeding and you have also seen that how we are getting the fibers from uh, fibers to wool okay so i think we have done with the explanation of rearing and breeding of sheep so it's just that what's the rearing students so rearing you can see it's the easy one that the maintenance of the sheep you can say it any of the uh, maintenance in any of the case you can say it. so it is that like maintenance of sheep are there like providing them food providing them medical facility providing them area so that they can live there properly so that so you can see everything is there in the rearing process and then breeding you see that when we are uh, like we have to you like what we have to do we have to find out these special sheep and we call them as the special parents because they are having the soft hair texture and then their characteristics pass to their offspring and then we call them as the selective breeding so that is the rearing and breeding of the sheep
okay so that's how student we are getting the wool and that wool we can further use for the cloth production okay now these are some question which we are going to discuss student so which part of the black sheep have wool see student it's not about black sheep white sheep or any other whether they are black or white or some differentiation is there in color but we don't have red sheep or blue sheep or that's how it's just that the color of the wool which we are getting so we just dye them so that we get the different different color of wools so that whether it is the black sheep or any sheep so we just get the wool from their fleece or the hair part okay what is mean to, uh, meant by the white fleece of the lamb so obviously student what is the white fleece that means that is having the white color of hair exactly white color hair they are having so it's just that wool is obtained from the hairy fibers of the sheep white fleece of the lamb refers to the white color of their fur that means the lamb uh, is producing the white color of fur okay so what we have read today that what are the fibers then we have seen the fibers has been divided into two parts natural fibers animal fibers uh was oh sorry natural fibers and synthetic fibers and then natural fiber has been divided for the plant fibers and animals fibers plant fibers we have studied already that is the cotton and uh, the jute production in my class six then we come to the woolen fibers that how that is the animals fibers which we are getting from animals and then we have seen that the wool we are getting from different type of animals as well but the the main thing is that from their hair part from their fleece part so from that we get the fibers we used to remove that fibers that is called as the shearing process then we clean that fiber that uh, hair part of the sheep so that we can remove the unwanted particle whether it is dirt particle or any grease or any oil that we called as the scurrying process and after that we convert them into yarn and then to fabric and then we come to know what is rearing what is breeding and then what is selective breeding so that's how student we have covered all of the topics of today's session and then with the continue part of this chapter we we'll continue in the next session okay and i hope you got each and every point but students if any question any query comes to your mind what you can do is you can put your question over the public forum or the private forum of the ask ideas and you will get your answers from the experts and that's how we we'll complete this chapter with a great attention with great work and we will continue the other part in the next next session and that's how we uh, in the next session we are going to complete this chapter and what else i can say thank you for watching this video and just keep learning from ask ideals thank you